Um, I've been doing this now for 45 years and I've only worked on historic buildings. I was involved in Liberty uh, actually over 20 years ago, helping them out with issues they had inside the building and how they'd actually deal with trying to make a modern department store out of a building that simply wasn't designed for that. And so when the time came to do this particular piece of work, I was fortunately very luckily placed to do it. I know a great deal about this building. I've crawled over every inch of it and know that the history in great detail and written much of the history. For me, it was a, a wonderful thing to do. It was the kind of culmination of uh, almost 20 years of, of involvement. These are the glory of uh, Liberty, these chimneys especially made bricks, have been modelled on those at Hampton Court. They're a slightly smaller scale, but um, they've copied all the details and all the bricks were taken from special moulds and then hand rubbed to make these patterns. Each one is different and they're designed to be seen from the street so that these become a landmark and you immediately notice this is liberty, you've arrived. What we're doing with it at the moment is very little, they've they're beautifully preserved They've lasted very well. We're replacing some of the flaunching, touching up some of the pointing, and that's all we need to do. They've stood the test of 100 years with no problem. This is a part of the roof that's not yet been repaired or cleaned. And you can see the state of it, a lot of moss and algae growth. But look at the beautiful detailing here. This is a laced valley where the tiles are laced together and you don't need to have a separate lead gutter. These are the granny bonnet hips which again are a beautiful traditional detail held with a retainer and here we've got a lovely little detail where the the tiles have been cut to fill in the hips and each one is different. There's another one over there, another one here and another one there and then the crowning glory of these roofs there is the glorious weather vane which is a model of the, the Mayflower a beautiful model, very accurately made by the same people that made all the iron windows. Burnished in 24 karat gold, it turns in the wind and glistens and shines and it can be seen all the way from Oxford Street. Yeah, we found a number of surprises which were largely to do with bad workmanship and uh, things that were clearly covered up. We found, for example, brickwork infill between the timber studs, which is really poor brickwork really underburnt bricks and bricks that should have been thrown away and they've caused cracking, caused cracking to the, the render, caused problems with the timber work which has cracked. Now here we see a typical bay before any work has started. This is the condition that we're faced with. Here we've got the infill panels which are mostly concrete that are, are cracked and damaged. Water is getting in behind the paint and damaging it. We've got cracks in the timber, we've got poor timber repairs, we've got poor plaster repairs, decaying pigeon netting, paint which is uneven where it's been patched in in the past. But we can also see up here this marvellous carving which was done by Liberty's craftsman, not the main contractor, on oak barge boards, not teak, which is intended to be seen from the street. So it's slightly out of perspective and quite robust. And all this is how we start the work of refurbishment. This is the lantern over the central atrium. We're repairing all the lanterns. They were previously covered in a patent glazing system that went in a few year, relatively few years ago that wasn't actually very good and wasn't like the original. We've removed all that. We're putting a new glazing system in that spans direct from the ridge to the eaves so no weight is carried on the purlins. That would be a double glazed system so we can actually have some heat saving and energy saving. The side panels here will be uh, also covered in laminated glass and they have a very unusual frame which is shaped in a gothic form which differs from the inside and the outside but all carved in one piece. There's a really peculiar detail here that involves the sprinkler system which is buried inside the rafters so that you can't see it anywhere other than just seeing the nozzle which comes through from the inside, a very clever and unique detail 
All the timber work here on this hammer beam roof is in walnut and oak. Again, very unusual choice of timber, all hand carved, mostly in the um, Liberty workshop and then erected by the main contractor, all in wonderful condition, demonstrating the perfect skill of the way these people carved every piece. Every piece is just very slightly different. The main structural challenge is, is the issues with the building that moves. Because it's a timber frame applied to a steel and concrete building, they move at different rates. Much of it was done in very, very hard render, which you would never normally do with a, a timber building. So we've had problems with the junctions and the joints. But the structure itself is remarkably robust, very sound. We've found nothing in the main structure which has caused us a problem, where so many buildings in Regent Street, built at the same time as this, suffer from what's known as Regent Street disease, which affects the steelwork uh, to quite a serious degree. We've had none of that. This is up on the fourth floor level at uh, the, the rear of the building in Little Marlborough Street. Part of this building was added on later, but this is the structure of the building. It looks like a half-timbered traditional uh, brick and timber and plaster building. It's actually steel framed. A steel is actually fixed with rivets and this is what carries the building. It's enclosed in brickwork. The, the steel work was uh, a bit rusted, so it expanded and caused cracks in the brickwork, so we've opened it up treated all the steel work, we're now going to close it back in but give it a bit more breathing space so that it can move with heat and, and rust if it needs to. So this is a completed section of the, of the roof work. Tiles have all been cleaned and checked for bedding. The granny bonnet hips have all been rebedded and repointed in place. The windows here, the leaded lights, these are a group of the 1550 windows that we've had to repair and re-lead. They've, the original glass has all been reused and all the uh, ironmongery where it was missing have all, has all been replaced and remade to exactly match the original in the same way. All the lead work has been replaced here. The lead work was split, damaged and poorly fixed which caused problems with water ingress. And here we can see the, the lead work has all been replaced with a higher grade, properly welted joints and a drip formed here to make sure the water stays off. These are the finished work on the panels. The panels have all been filled and properly decorated and the same with the, the timber. The timber was stripped back to remove poor quality paint finishes and repainted with a, with a matching original colour and stain. And this is a perfect spot to explain something peculiar of, of the building. We all know Liberty for the white and black frame. This is what we associated with Liberty. But actually Liberty originally was not painted. It was exposed, the timber was left, was left to be shown with all the texture and pattern. After a few years though, first it becomes fashionable to have uh, the black and white colour and second uh, actually the, the timber that came half from the ships, half was new timber, it kind of was seasoning and deteriorating in different ways, it was very patchy and at the end it started to be a bit greyer so it was decided to paint it back. So uh, when we started the restoration project uh, we, we wonder was, uh, if, uh, should we put it back actually to how it was originally intended and we had a lot of conversation with Historic England and the Conservation Office uh, if uh, this was the right approach. It was then decided and agreed with really. the significance of liberty is in the black and white. This is why at, at the end we came back and we really painted and redecorated the elevations as it is famous for. The good surprises, the uh, astounding things, are the level of craftsmanship when it's good. The wood carving and the stone carving is absolutely superb. It's wonderful and it's designed to be seen from afar. Beautifully proportioned, wonderfully undercut. Well, we're now up on the, uh, the bridge link that links the original Tudor building with the East India House on Regent Street and this faces onto Great Marlborough Street and the corner of Regent Street. And this was an opportunity taken to create a, a splendid centrepiece that would act as a landmark for liberty. We're above the famous clock with the Georgian Dragon movement and all this is done in Portland Stone 
all hand carved and beautifully done by specialist stone carvers. Here we've got gargoyles acting as caryatids supporting the, the weight above and all the work here is deeply carved, deeply undercut florets, flower work added underneath the cornice and here we've got foliated work with the roses all deeply undercut here to cast a wonderful shadow in the daylight as the sun moves across animating the whole building. And we've just cleaned this very gently to remove soot deposits and sulphur deposits from the days of coal fires and uh, done by hand with, with very light brushes and it's brought out this wonderful modelling, this deep relief. When the scaffold comes down all this whole new bridge piece will be revealed in, uh, in splendid clean condition showing all the shadows and the casts and all the undercutting of the stonework and that will be seen for the first time in a generation. This is one of the windows in preparation for completion. The glass has been taken out so you get a better idea of how it works and this is the unique opening system. As you can see this is blacksmith made. It's made of built up sections of steel originally would have been wrought iron, not extruded like a modern window. These are built up, so they're very heavy, very solid windows. And it opens and closes just like a normal casement window. But you turn these turn buttons here and here, and then it swivels on pivots like this, which means then from inside you can put your hand through and clean the outside of the glass. So you have an, uh, an inbuilt window cleaning system. This we believe is unique to Liberties. We've never found another system exactly like this. Closes back up again, fix the, uh, the turn buttons, and it just closes like a normal window. This is a window that's typical condition before we started work. Here you can see it's thickly overpainted, so much so that you can't even open the mechanism. Here the glass is distorted there are no strengthening saddlebars. It's had poor previous repair that's burst all the lead work. So we would take this window out very carefully, save all the glass and remake the lead canes. And here you can see some examples of these wonderful stained glass panels which were often mistakenly thought to be medieval. They're much too good to be medieval. They're extremely fine, beautiful work done at the same time as the main building in the 1920s. Again, the lead work has eroded, it's damaged, it's had impact damage and has been clogged with dirt. So again, we will take this to pieces very carefully, making sure every joint is sound and reassembling it as it was originally intended. Yeah, we've both got anniversaries. Yeah, we're, we've got our sort of 25th anniversary coming up of this particular form of the company. Um, because although I've been, been going 45 years, this company has been set up just on 25. And Liberty has got their centenary, uh, which is next year. This scaffold will be down. The building will be resplendent and looking exactly like it did the day it was finished. Mm -hmm.